All right, let's go, Jungman. You're, you're live. All right. right now? Yeah. Oh, gosh. All right, all right. Welcome to the penultimate meeting of Game Devs. Um, again, thank you all for making this great semester. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys stick around till the spring and stuff and onwards. So today I'll have a presentation on the flat art style that you can find in some kind of games. So I'm not an artist nor a historian, so allow me to talk a little bit about art history. Uh, from an amateur perspective, I think that a lot of movement in art can be summarized in this theme of going towards what we see versus what we feel. So there's this um, like back and forth response between realism and expressionism. So for example, I just want to go a few years back into the early 2000s BC. So this is ancient Mesopotamia. <laughs> and you can see some depictions such as this, which really try to um, capture the person's anatomy and really depict what they're doing. Um, while you have another relic such as this over here, which is more expressive. Like the anatomy is like, yeah, the, she's swole. <laughs> like you don't exactly see this in real life, while you might see something more like in the left in real life. And similarly, there, there's been movements documented, specifically realism and impressionism, which was a response to this. Um, where you might see this in real life, but you might not exactly see this in real life, but you could definitely feel what that artist was going for. Um, so this goes back and forth. So into the mid-1900s, um, you see um, abstract expressionism, which is basically like these Pollock paintings. Um, just a lot of feeling going into art. There was a response to this trying to say that art isn't just about a bunch of emos, that art can represent something more meaningful in terms of fact and more realism, uh, realistic. And that a response to that was minimalism, which tried to deny any kind of connotation to um, expression and had very clear cut shapes. So for example, there's this one sculpture called Die by Tony Smith uh, in the art, Modern Art Museum. Very minimalist, very strong shapes. Wait, All right. How big is that cube? Ah, yes, great question. It's six feet by six oh, by man. six. That's an awesome cube. <laughs> it's Die. <laughs> All right, so moving on. 2007, Apple releases the iPhone, which when turned off, really looks minimalist. It's just one brick with a button on it, just one simple button. It was very clean and sleek, and many phones would, after that, like this would revolutionize what phones would look like. However, it's important to note that the icons used in here were not really minimalist. In fact, these icons were following a different art style called scale morphism. Scale meaning tool, morph meaning shape. And this is iOS 6 here by 2012, but Apple was still continuing this trend where they wanted to make the buttons look more realistic per se. A lot of these images look like actual photorealistic stuff. The eye, the eye of the camera here is very glassy and glossy. Uh, you see a little counter that these are reflecting on. There's a lot of elements trying to kind of fool you that is saying that the stuff in the camera is real. Um, but interestingly, in the same year, 2012, there was a response by another company that would forever change what technology and those kind of icons would look like. That was called Flat Design. Flat Design was based off of, um, well, heavily inspired by Swiss design which popped up during the Art Deco area, 1950s. Um, some might say that it originates even before this um, in Eastern Europe. But in here, they used a very rigid grid system. Everything was very orderly, very clean. And they also used very bright colors to accentuate stuff. Um, in addition to this, this um, 
tech company apply a minimalist art style onto it, something with without lines. So essentially they would have grids without lines and this OS, this operating system was Windows 8. <laughs> What? When this first came out, everyone hated it. But not exactly hated it because of how it looked like, but hated it in how to navigate through Windows 8. But nevertheless, once this got out there, it made waves. Ever since then, other companies would start using this kind of lineless, minimalist art style. You can see phone apps, YouTube channels, even companies would change their logos from like removing shades and stuff. And you would have other companies such as Apple starting to follow this kind of design as well. But this image here is actually pretty curious. It was coming from a website that was talking about Apple's flat design and also its limitations. See, as a lot of people were confused with Windows 8, with flat design, a lot of people also became confused of what to do with these kind of images. For example, in this screen here, you see a banner being like distinctly different from the rest of the phone. However, you wouldn't know exactly what to do with the banner, whether to swipe left or right, to click on the banner, or to even to do anything with the banner. So in response to this, Google came along and made something called material design which is one step further in this kind of minimalist um, flat design. <clears throat> so in this example, you can see that in flat design, you just have strong colors, strong shapes, that's it. But in material, you bring back some of the realism and you bring back the shades so that they look like layers on top of each other instead of being all in the same plane. Um, in addition, Google also emphasized a lot of movement. As you can see here, um, up there, which is a Adobe's After Effects animation, you can really see what the different parts are doing because they are moving, because they are moving. Um, you basically, yeah, Adobe started to pick this up and a lot of people nowadays use After Effects to draw these kind of material design, flat design, art styles. All right, deep breath. Let's try to wrap this around towards games. How do flat design, um, what does it matter in the game industry? Now, for a lot of indie game developers, there's a lot of limitations, whether it be money, time, or even skill. Well, flat design really helps in accommodating in one or two of those aspects because especially when you're trying to make a 2D game, it's very easy to animate in flat design because you are already working with shapes, so you could just move the shapes around instead of redrawing every frame. And additionally, the art style is already clean, so there's already some kind of um, mood that you present when you choose this kind of art style. All right, so I'm just going to go through a lot of games that possibly use this kind of art style. I first want to talk about Paper Mario. Now, Paper Mario, the art style itself, isn't exactly flat design. At least I wouldn't say it was flat design. Because even though like the characters themselves are actually flat, and that the characters themselves are like pieces of paper, um, number one, like the arts of like these sprites aren't too minimalist. They are minimal um, compared to what Mario usually looks like. But in this image, you can see um, <coughs> that there are still shades around, and this is what material design really goes for. Actually, there is these shades behind the different layers of different papers. But in this game engine, they were actually built in a 3D world and just presented onto the screen. Material design tries to not, you won't have to make the 3D world and in fact just draw it on 2D to make that kind of illusion. So I wanted to bring up Two Dots, which is a mobile puzzle game. <clears throat> it's a very calm game. The soundtrack's very, um, <clears throat> very 
booty, there's a lot of acoustic sounds, and overall the game is super clean. You can see that this is just straight up flat design. You can see the dots clearly from the background because there are all these different colors. There's only a handful of colors on the screen as well, but you could definitely distinguish them. And yeah, and in addition to that, the rest of the game, like sound design and how these move, is really clean, very snappy. But just because you use flat design doesn't mean that you're restricted to these kind of moves. You could have a more gritty experience, such as the game Just Shapes and Beats. Now this is a bullet dodging game. There's usually a lot of things going around the screen. Very high action. The background music is like dubstep, um, very in your face. And the art style complements that because you can see there's only two main colors presented at a time. <laughs> and, but in the end, you still got this notion of being very clean, even though the game is very high action, very um, high momentum and stuff. Thus, in the end, I hope these two examples show like the variety of games you can make with this flat design. Now, I would be amiss if I didn't mention Thomas Was Alone, which is a classic game that follows this minimalist art style to a T. It's a platformer that is basically just you moving these rectangles, but the game itself is revolved around this narrative that describes what these rectangles do, and like there's this lovely story behind it. But in addition to the great minimalism that this art, um, this game provides, I mean, I guess games are a type of art, but in addition to that, there are very sharp shadows you can see from every object. This really indicates where the light is coming from and really indicates a sense of direction where you should go. So with these kind of sharp shadows, kind of going back to Google's material design, introducing shadows to show different layers. Here it's introducing shadows to show direction of where the user is supposed to go. Alright, so I wanted to take like my own version, I guess, when I was trying to make my own game. I wanted to follow this kind of art style. So I first had a character that looked like this. Um, hopefully this can also show that there's some limitations to flat art. As in, this character was supposed to be in a particular pose. I could ask right now what you guys think this pose is supposed to be. Like, what is he doing right now? Standing. He's standing, but where are his arms? Oh, behind his back. Exactly. Oh my God. They're actually supposed oh, to be behind God. his back. But it's very hard to tell because Ooh. trying to use just these few colors, especially <coughs> when you have these colors bordering each other, you can't tell that. It looks like a mannequin without arms. <coughs> Thus, my first, uh, my initial solution was to add these little creases onto the character. Um, However, I went back to look at other games and see how they actually solved this. So since flat design has a limited color palette, it was important to consider silhouettes. Now we talked about this last, uh, last time in my previous, um, previous presentation, but silhouettes are one of the rules in character design where this, for example, a bunch of silhouettes here you, you would be able to tell what character it is just by looking at their outlines. And in these outlines, you see specific gaps, you see specific poses that really tell what the character is. In addition, these kind of poses can also give a sense of uh, personality to the character rather than just having them standing, having them doing something else. Um, and again, this has been used in games before. Valve's Team Fortress 2 is a um, very common example of this, where they really emphasize on different body types so that players can immediately recognize which character they're looking at just at a glance. Now in flat art, this can be seen in the game Night in the Woods. Uh, if you can see in some of the frames, every time a character is standing still, their legs are actually at a distance from each other, so you can 
still see that there are two different legs. And while they're moving, you can see even though the legs are the same color, that they're still just moving along at such a quick pace that you can really tell that those are two different legs. In addition, it's kind of hard to tell here, but uh, this character's sleeves are a different color than uh, her shirt, which are also different from the color of her hands. Now, these are bordering shapes, but they're all specifically made to be a different color, so you can really recognize that this is a part of the arm instead of having them all conglomerated, just like before with my character that looked like a mannequin without arms. So, um, having this in mind, I tried to redesign this character. I tried to have a personality that's more, um, not exactly strict, but more kind of awkward, kind of more robotic. So with that kind of theme in mind, I uh, made a new silhouette that looked like this, had more gaps into it. Hopefully it also displays that like those are arms instead of just part of his body. And yeah, in the end, it looked like this. Essentially, there was more shapes, more parts to this character, just to really distinguish that there's, um, it's different. It's not just all one body, but several parts that make up this character. All right, so one of the last games I want to show is Wander Song. Now, in addition to character art design, flat design can also possibly confuse people due to the background. Just like how Apple faced this kind of issue and Google solved it with shades and small shadows, Wandersong does this by focusing in and out of layers. If you can see, every time he jumps to the second layer, you can see the layer behind it zoom into focus while the foreground actually kind of expands out a little bit. So it really gives you a sense of this kind of material that you're going from the foreground to the midground. All right, so in the end, I do want to say that flat design isn't the only option. Um, these were the top apps found in the Google Play Store a few days ago. And there's a few, like one, like two or three games that actually use flat art, but most games don't. So in fact, in, especially for an individual game developer, there are still tons of options that people do use. I uh, just wanted to go through a laundry list. Uh, for example, pixel art style. Um, one of the pros is that it's very accessible to start off with um, and it's also very flexible. Like if you're really good at art, you could get more high definition, such as like Shovel Knight over there. But even if you're not, you could have very like kind of minimalist kind of games, such as the game over there. Um, some cons, though, is that it's pretty common. There's a lot of game engines out there, such as RPG Maker, that really do reflect um, what Undertale and something like Stardew Valley looks like already. And additionally, movement. This was a GIF that I found about like pixel art. It's not an actual game, but it was someone trying to emulate the pixel art style. However, <clears throat> without some of the details, you can really tell that this truck like without the wheels turning, isn't actually like going through the, this kind of background. It's just an image. It looks fake. Um, there are still limitations to pixel art that you'll have to accommodate to like draw more frames and stuff. Um, Hand-drawn art style, basically, if you can do it, it's amazing. There's no limits to what you could express um, with hand-drawn games. You could draw every frame out, you could put down every meaning. <clears throat> There's no limitations, but again, you would have to have the skill to draw these kind of arts. And lastly, there's this whole subsection of indie games that's like the 3D art um, in 3D games. Now, there is a smaller market compared to 2D kind of games for the indie developers, but there's a whole new set of skills that you would need to really make these kind of 3D games. But uh, these two games here, I do want to point out, you could have a 2D game, a game that really functions like a 2D game, like inside of here, but is made by 3D puppets. Now that's also a uh, 
benefit to have a 3D art style because once you have a 3D model, you don't need to draw every frame, you could just move it around, move a puppet around. And Donna County here has a low polygonal art style, again, kind of calling back to the clean, minimalist art style that flat design might offer in the 2D world. So yeah, um, that would be my presentation. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so, earlier on, you were talking about, um, like, how a lot of art was like a reaction to previous art. Mm -hmm. So, and so I guess you kind of see that flat design was a reaction to like the more, um, what was the word you used? Like, Just scale more. Yeah, that one. And then, further on, material design was like a reaction to flat design. So. What do you think is the next step? Like, just, just, just totally, like, if you just had to make a random guess, uh, like, like, well, like do, do you think, mm -hmm. so, like, flat design has been around for, like, the last, what, the last, like, six, seven years, kind of, right? And then material design would be, I guess, like, people trying to get away from that and move on to something different. Do you think, do you think material design is where we're going to be for a while, or it's kind of changing? I personally feel like material, di uh, material design is very economic. It's very easy to make, it's very accessible, especially with programs out there such as Adobe After Effects really defining that art style. Um, I do feel like it would be around for a long time. Uh, some of the problems with scale morphism, of course, is that when someone tries to like redraw the logo or like try to recall the logo, there will be like little tiny details that you won't even notice. For example, like the Safari logo having like a square version of the map with like little notches at the compass. People won't remember all of that. People will just remember it. it was supposed to be a compass, a blue one. Um, so I feel like, especially in this tech industry, where there are a lot of like new products coming out and stuff, I do feel like material design would would be around for a long while. <sighs> I don't know if they'll ever change back to scale morphism or anything more realistic per se. I mean, in a way, material design was a step towards realism compared to flat design. Um, and of course, material design isn't the... People still get confused with material design. Mm. However, if we would go back, I don't know, I think there might be still a few years before we ever change or go completely back to realism. Uh, I remember how to merge the material design into the uh, into a game art style. I, I just can't imagine. Oh yeah. That. Yeah. It's, yeah. Great question. So in a game, especially if you want to do something flat arts, um, which the reason why you might want to do that is because it's very easy to make, as in like the animations and stuff, you're already working with vectors, you are already working with shapes, you just need to move those around, you don't need to exactly draw every frame, you just need to move it around. Um, however, material design is a step further from flat design because it introduces um, shadows and stuff. So some of the games, um, such as Thomas Was Alone, or even Water Song, really shows these shadows behind like characters to show that this isn't the foreground, this isn't the background, to distinguish like what the player is controlling versus like the background or like surrounding environment. Any other, yeah. yeah, so another question. So I like the example of that game that was like, was it Just Beats and... Um, mm. uh, just Shapes and Beats. Yeah, Just Shapes and Beats, exactly. Yeah. And uh, I, I like it because I, I can never really imagine like a menacing flat design and they just showed one, mm. which I think is pretty neat, right? And like, you know, like the whole spooky scary skeletons, that's like, it's a lot of things you can do with flat design. Do you think there's anything that like, 
is honestly outside the realm of plot design. Not in terms of like, oh, I want to make a game that looks like it was made in the 1920s, like it was Cuphead, mm-hmm. but rather in terms of like a feeling. Like, can plot design basically do any kind of atmosphere that any other game could do? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty interesting because a lot of plot design games that do have very moody or very ominous kind of um, tones do start using shapes. For example, Night in the Woods, I think, does have some moments where they do use some shades, as in like gradients. Um, of course, there's still um, very strong um, shadows and stuff. There's still very strong shapes. Um, but let's see. I don't know if there's any mood that you can't feel, because like it's hard to say that. For like example, like pixel art, is there a genre of pixel art that you can't do? I feel like you would be able to reach some kind of mood with any kind of art style. Of course, it's much easier to do, or it's much more common to find calm, um, more slow kind of games with flat design or very clean games. But you could also just I think it's not just the art, but also the sound design and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, do, do you think also design limits genre? Like, for example, imagine a first-person shooter or like a MOBA or a strategy game with flat design. I think that would be kind of hard to do. So, um, something like a first-person or those kind of games, a lot of those games are in 3D. Yeah, well, like by definition, they have so, to be. Right? So. The flat design co- uh, analogy to a 3D would be, I would say, something more like low polygonal art style, kind of like Donut County, um, <coughs> where they have very strong shapes, very vibrant um, colors. And I think if you use shadows enough, I think you would be able to pull something off like that, in, even in 3D. I'm trying to think of any examples that use that. How about, how about, how about like a Red Hot or whatever? Yeah, Super Hot? Yeah, Super Hot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's, that's kind of like flat sign in the 3D world. Exactly. It's very low polygonal, um, very minimalist, but again, very high octane. So, I can't think of any moods that basically any art design can't Any other questions, especially those that came in later? Oh, yeah, that was like a little thing I made for the game I was working on. Cool. Alright, I think that's it. Yeah!